Hello everyone, today you're going to be learning about percentages. When we think of the word percent, we want to be thinking out of 100. The term percent means out of 100. If you look at this part of the word right here, you might recognize that as the French word ça, which means 100. So if you have a percentage such as 45%, okay, then we know that that means 45 out of 100. Okay, so that would be a little less than half. If we wanted to then reverse this, if I knew what the fraction was, so for example, 50 out of 100, that would be half, and I wanted to turn that into a percentage, that's very easy to turn into a percentage because it's already out of 100, so then I would just say, oh, well, that's 50%. If you see the same kind of um, representation but in decimal form, so 0 0.50 would also be 50 hundredths, but written as a decimal. That's also considered to be out of 100. So again, that also means the same as 50%. So all of these are very easy to transition back and forth between because we can see and work with the out of 100. Now, where percentages get a little bit trickier is if the denominator is not 100. Okay, so for example, 3 fifths. So we're not sure about the percentage right now because this is not out of 100. The denominator is not 100, the denominator is 5. So what we need to do is we need to turn that denominator into 100. So just how we were working with fractions before and changing denominators, how do we get the denominator to change into another number? Well, we have to multiply. And then whenever you multiply the bottom by, you must also multiply the top by. So we have to think, what do I multiply 5 with to get 100? So hopefully you figured out that that is 20. 5 times 20 is 100. So if I multiply the denominator by 20, I'll have to multiply the numerator by 20, which would give me a new fraction of 60 out of 100, which is exactly what I want, a fraction out of 100. And now I'm able to know that that is 60%. 3 out of 5 is 60%. All right. So anytime you see a denominator on the bottom, that can be turned into 100. So let's do another example. Let's say we have a denominator of 10, okay? And let's pretend this is a mark on a test. So that's a really common place where you would see percentages as a student, is your teachers would convert any marks you have in fraction form into percent to give you a mark for your report card. So let's say that you have eight out of 10 on say a spelling test or a math test. All right, so already I can tell you did pretty well. You didn't get 100% because that would be 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 would be the whole thing or 100%. But it looks like you still did pretty well. So let's have a look here. This is not out of 100. This, this denominator is 10 right now. So we want to turn that into a denominator of 100, which means we're going to multiply that denominator by 10, and so we'll have to multiply that numerator by 10, and then that means we have 80 out of 100, which is 80%, which is an A minus, so good job. 80% is most of 100, so that's a pretty high mark. Okay, now here's where it's going to get even trickier. All right, you may see a fraction. So say for example, nine out of 15, okay? And if we look at this number, there's nothing to multiply 15 by to get us to 100. So now how are we going to get this denominator of 100 that we need for a percent? We have to figure out how to work with that 15. So we know there's nothing we can multiply that by, and this is going to happen sometimes. So if this happens, then what we have to do is we, they actually are going to recommend that we divide first and reduce this fraction and bring the denominator down to the smallest number possible. To do that, we have to think of a number 
that is the greatest common factor of both 9 and 15. So in other words, the highest number that we can divide 9 and 15 by that will work for both. Okay, so we've got to think a little bit here. They're both odd numbers, so 2 isn't going to work. Dividing by 5 works for 15, but not for 9. So maybe let's try 3. So we're going to divide 15 by 3 and then divide 9 by 3. And what we're hoping for is a number on in the denominator that's going to work with 100. So 15 divided by 3 equals 5. What I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. And now I have a denominator of 5. Does that work with 100? Can I multiply something by 5 to get to 100? Yes, I can. I can multiply it by 20. And then I can multiply the numerator by 20. And now I can finally figure out a percentage. So I have 60 out of 100, which equals 60%. So if you have 9 out of 15 on a test, then that is equal to 60%. A little more work this way, but still doable. So if you have a fraction like 1 fifth, okay, you can also think about it in a model to figure out how much each part of that is worth. So if you had a test that was out of 5 marks, how much would each part be worth so that the whole thing would add up to 100? And I've got a fraction pie here or a model to help me and you'll see one similar in your book today. And all you would really need to be doing is thinking about if the whole thing is worth 100, then I would just divide by five to see how much each part is worth. So 100 divided by five is 20. That means each part of my fifths should equal 20% and that is correct. So 20% all around that model, each part worth 20% will make my entire model worth 100. So if you are seeing uh, percentages in a model, what you want to do is take the total number of parts in your model and just um, divide take 100 and divide it by the amount of parts on your model to find out how much each part is worth and they should all be worth the same amount of percentage and ultimately add up to 100. All right, so have fun working with percentages today. Uh, remember that percent means out of 100, 